everyone, and welcome to Inside Leather History, a fireside chat. I'm Doug O'Keefe. I am the host and the producer of the chats, along with Mistress Joanne Gaddy. The Fireside Chats are a program of the Leather Archives and Museum in Chicago. Today, I'm sitting down for an interview with Paul Feitler. Paul is the is Mr. Bear Luxembourg, 2020 through 2021. Thank you, Paul. So, Thank you. Thank you for asking me. So tell me a little bit about your growing up in Luxembourg. How I've never been there. Tell me a bit about it. Growing up, uh, first, what you have to know, Luxembourg is a very, very small country uh, sitting between Germany, France and Belgium. Uh, the whole country has about mm, 600 45,000 inhabitants. Okay. So uh, only to give you an idea of uh, uh, the, the, what Luxembourg is. Growing up, hmm, so I grew up in a small village, not so far away from Luxembourg city, the capital. Um, I would say I, I grew up in a modern family, but a more or less conservative family. Uh, Catholic family. I got a real Catholic education. Um, well, yes, so as a child, you feel fine. This was more or less okay. <laughs> yes, so I was uh, looking a bit around and uh, at first looking uh, inside of myself and uh, I remember so well when I was mm, 10, 11 uh, at primary school uh, uh, in the, the, during the history lessons, there had been uh, an image of a caveman. And I remember so well, I always looked at this caveman full of hair on the body and so, woo. And uh, at this time, of course, I, I didn't uh, ask me any questions, but remembering on it later, I thought, yeah, of course, it was clear. I would say coming to high school, uh, it had been a bit more difficult for me. Difficult in a way, uh, I was more or less introverted. Uh, and... I was always a uh, bit uh, not like the others, yeah. How were you different? Told you coming, uh, so really from conservative family, themes like sexuality have, have never been uh, spoken on. Uh, so when I came to high school, I at first never understood all the uh, jokes uh, concerning sexuality. I thought, what the fuck are they talking about? And of course, uh, at one point, there had also been uh, a bit of mobbing. And uh, well, yes, so uh, I was different from, from other students, pupils, kids at the school. So also, okay, um, try to have a girlfriend. And uh, well, she was very sympathetic. She was uh, really kind. Uh, but she was not what, in fact, I was looking for or what I should have looked for. And uh, I remember very well the first kiss was her. Uh, she gave me, it was a real um, shocking experience for me. I said, oh, my God, what's going on? What's wrong with me? So everything, uh, every signs uh, were so loud. Paul, you are not like them and uh, so I was on my way and thought okay hmm I think at about 16 17 I was really sure about what happens but I had a real dilemma um, so because I knew no one around me in my friends who was gay or who talked about it, I felt all alone. And my dilemma was, hmm, are you really gay? Can you say you are a homosexual 
guy, if you don't have any boyfriend, if you don't know any persons, and on the other way, the same thing I told myself, well, it's not possible to get any boyfriend if you cannot admit that you are gay. So when you were uh, a little older is when you began to discover this. How did you explore then? I was very insecure. But at one time, there had been this moment, uh, as I told before, uh, where uh, inside myself, I was really like, like a, a volcano, I really uh, nearly exploding. And so, so, Paul, no one can help me. You must do it yourself. So, but when you were finally coming out around, I think you said around 21, is that right? Yes, we are. When you were doing that, were you finding magazines then? Were you finding uh, the gay scene somewhere? I, uh, I uh, began going out in the gay scene and uh, I very soon so a very very fast found also my first boyfriend uh, at this time and uh, this was for me a very good start how did you meet your first boyfriend <laughs> my first boyfriend i met at the music conservatory of luxembourg uh, uh, i remember so well i came in and there he was staying there, looking at me. I looked at him. And uh, so we got in con uh, conversation. We talked uh, together. And, uh, well, that's it. Uh, uh, and it came that it would be my first love. Yeah. What did you learn about gay, about being gay at that time? At this time, so first of all, being gay, what liberation, the best thing I, it could happen, really. Uh, for me, uh, uh, it was always this, oh my God, finally. Uh, yeah, best thing ever. Uh, about gay sex, uh, oh yeah, I remember also with my first boyfriend, uh, I talked about the experience of the kiss of this girlfriend I tried to have and uh, which was a more or less a shocking experience and I was so afraid of this first kiss from a man I was so nervous and then we kissed and whoosh fireworks the best thing ever <laughs> so and uh Gay sex was a uh, really great uh, experiment for me. Everything was new, and uh, I, uh, as I always said and always say, I'm a very curious person. And so, yeah, let's try, let's have fun. What experience did you take from that? Emotionally, physically, how did that help you grow? For sure, it gave me so much self-confidence. Uh, I was no more the uh, introverted person I had been before. Uh, well, of course, uh, I grew up for a long time also in my gay life. Uh, it came not from one moment to the other, uh, but changed everything. It changed everything for in my life for my life but do you did you spend more time in your life in a relationship versus being single yes oh yes 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 uh i don't know uh how uh it happened but i uh came very fast from one relationship in another relationship okay okay but when you were younger in the community and you were seeing these bars for the first time, 
Which bars in Luxembourg were your favorites? Which ones did you really like? I think an, an important uh, thing also to, to understand, um, 10, no, 15 years and more, more before, uh, we had um, six, seven, or even more gay bars which is really a lot uh, for a city. So the capital of Lux, uh, Luxembourg City has now uh, 125,000 inhabitants. Uh, so at this time, it was even not 100,000. And this had been really, really a, a large number of gay bars, which we don't have anymore. Um, I must admit, uh, the gay scene changed a lot, uh, at least uh, for uh, considering the, the gay bars. So I would say the the one, the bar I had been, uh, I, I really liked was the Bar Rouge. And I, has, I must say, was the Bar Rouge because it uh, doesn't uh, exist anymore. It didn't survive COVID. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah. Why did you like it? Uh, the barman. The former barman had been uh, a very funny guy uh, uh, who spoke uh, a lot with uh, his clients. Uh, it was a very nice atmosphere, good music. Um, then a few years ago, he died, and uh, last year there came another uh, new barman I really liked too, uh, with whom I did uh, lots, or at least because of COVID, uh, several events. Um, I think even great events with uh, a lot of people coming and uh, this was really fun. Were there any leather bars, any hair bars, any anything like this? So, no, no, there have never been bars like this. Uh, as I told you, a uh, very small country, a uh, uh, very, very small city, there had been uh, gay bars. I. Uh, there had been several bars with um, drag shows. This was okay, but there have never been a bar specialized uh, for bears or neither leather. And uh, this is, in my point of view, um, something I personally missed and still misses, uh, there should be, because there is a small scene, but it's very difficult in Luxembourg, because also, uh, uh, to, to, to give you an explanation, uh, for being Luxembourger, it's so fast going out to the, to the other country. So, if you want to go to Brussels, if you want to go to Cologne, or if you want to go to Paris, it's the same time. Well, Paris with the TGV, with the uh, high-speed uh, train, uh, so it's one hour 45. In, one, in 90 minutes, you are in Brussels or in Cologne. Uh, so if you want to go really to a bear or a leather scene, you go up. And this makes it so difficult for the small community in Luxembourg. Let's explore that more. How did you even learn about the kinky community, the leather community, the bear community? Um, I learned it uh, in Cologne. And there I went out and it's at this time, for me, I could even say it had been my, my second coming out uh, uh, when I went to the bars and to the cruising bars and when I first met leather guys and I thought, 
oh my god this is so hot and uh i think this was my first real um um begegnung um uh, when when i met uh, when i met those men physically and uh uh the same more or less also for the bear scene yes there is a uh, of course there's a bear scene in luxembourg and i met them first for the bear pride so the first bear pride has been or where i have been was also five years ago uh and um well i'm i'm also Bear, Mr. Bear, number one, two, three, four. Yeah, I uh, four. Uh, well, five. There had been an, an yeah five. So I'm number five. So uh, even this is something more or less new. And uh, uh, but my experiences with leather and bears have definitely been in in Cologne. You told me that the the bars and the gay scene in Luxembourg is very small. Mm -hmm. There aren't yes. so many people. How did you know that you could go to another city to explore it more? Um, well, for Luxembourger, it's uh, evident that... Uh, in major large cities around, uh, there is the real gay scene. And for myself, uh, I was always interested in Cologne in Germany. And uh, I, I knew uh, there is the scene uh, where people go out. And I really wanted also to be part of the scene and I went out through the bars, uh, uh, gay bars, cruising bars and uh, there I finally met guys in leather or also the bears um, and for me this had been a very important uh, point um, in, in the way that I say, oh my God, this is so hot. This is really what I want to. Did someone tell you about this? How did you know where to go? Uh, I meet them in the bars, uh, drinking a Kölsch. So that's uh, the, the beer from Cologne. And uh, I love to talk to, to people saying, hello, hi, I'm Paul. And up, oh, you are in the conversation. And uh, so uh, does it happen? And uh, there are many of uh, guys I met, uh, which I can say now, OK, they are getting uh, uh, good friends of mine. And uh, yes. What did you learn about the kinky life? I met once uh, a puppy couple uh, at the bar. First time I met puppies. And uh, first I looked to them and I observed them. And they were so kind, one with the other. So they take so much attention one to the other that I said, Oh my God, this is so lovely. Uh, after this, I talked to them and uh, I always made and make the same experience. Uh, nevertheless, the fetish uh, they wear, um, these are persons so open-minded, warm-hearted persons uh, and uh, to listen to their stories uh, it's for me always a wow effect that uh, the first image you could have from a kinky person a fetish person uh, very often doesn't go together with their own personality yeah. And for me, this was really something new. And to say, wow, 
wall. Everyone has his, per his personal story, so interesting. Um, you can be this way, you can be that way, but you are all together and you must uh, have the possibility to, uh, to know them better and to say, oh, wow, I never thought about this. You have talked a lot about Cologne, but this is where you came out in the leather kinky community. You had your first kinky experience. What other impressions, what other thoughts do you have about the Cologne scene? For myself, I think the way that, uh, how it is possible to get in contact with guys, uh, to talk to them, uh, this makes it interesting for me uh, and sim sympathetic. I, I really love to go there. So how did you begin to learn about the bear scene? First contact I had uh, was not in uh, Cologne, but it was really in uh, Luxembourg during the Bear Pride, where I had been uh, for an election. So I had been in the public and I thought, oh, wow, that's, that's great. Okay, there are men um, talking to themselves as being a bear. And uh, for me, it was also... Uh, knew what as a bear and I thought okay this is very interesting then in Luxembourg we don't have any bear bars we talked uh, already about this but in Cologne there are bear bars I went out to those bars and I met only lovely open-hearted men and uh, uh, again I said wow uh, they are so kind and well, so um, yes, uh, uh, drinking beers together, talking together, uh, knowing each other. And uh, that's uh, what made it for me very uh, interesting. What about it? What about the bear scene was the most attractive to you? Is of course uh, the the physical attraction of uh, uh, chest hair and uh, being muscle bear. Um, that's for me something really attractive. Uh, but no, uh, not everybody is like this. And uh, um, for me, it, it it's a, a whole something um, that. Uh, uh, gets together. So not everyone is a muscle bear, uh, but um, the way the community lives together, um, this open-hearted way, that's made it for myself. I say, wow, yes, I really want to be part of this. How did you begin to do that? Well, yes, going out uh, to the bear bars, of course, but also person who marked my way was uh, the Michel, the Mr. Bear, uh, before me, so two years ago, uh, who, uh, which I followed on uh, Facebook and Instagram, and I thought, whoa, what he does is really cool for Luxembourg uh, be presented uh, uh, everywhere. And um, that was for myself where I said, this kind of stuff I want to do too. For example? Um, representing Luxembourg in other, in other countries. Um, showing the presence, hey, here we are too, uh, was for me something so important. And then also um, the role model as being bear. So uh, you are how you are and it's really good the way you are. Be proud of it and, and show it. Uh, this was a 
philosophy where I found myself totally inside and uh, where I told me, okay, Paul, yes, do this. Try it, uh, go to an election and uh, try your chance. Tell me about the uh, contest for your title. My contest had been in October 2019. Uh, there had, we had been uh, four contestants um, uh, and it had been uh, during two days. The first day was presentation at this bar rouge where I told you, uh, where everyone had been uh, presented and everyone had to talk to the public and uh, so on, uh, something I really uh, love uh, too. They talked, uh, they asked some questions everyone had uh, to do, uh, to, to, to answer, and everyone has to show something special. And uh, yes, so for myself, I, I sang a song. Um, I, I think this was uh, impre impressed uh, the public. And uh, well, yes. And uh, it had been a big party uh, already during the contest and after the contest, a wolf party. And uh, it was really a great event. So there were four contestants. Yep. Why did you win? So, yes, uh, being there with the public and for the public, I think this was a major thing. Uh, there had been a jury who gave points and also the public who uh, gave uh, their votes and yeah. How is the scene in Luxembourg now? Are they, the bars are open? All the bars are open, but we don't have any more gay bars. And this is really, really, um, I can't explain it. It's for me, uh, world fell together. I uh, remember when uh, the inhaber the, the, of, of the Bar Rouge, which was not the, uh, the, the barman, uh, told me, you know, uh, in fact, last year in October, when you organized the events, we really did a lot of money, much more money than all the months before. But I don't think it's a good idea to reopen. And uh, he wanted to do a little restaurant inside, which is uh, still in work. And uh, so, well, gay scene in Luxembourg, the gay bars in Luxembourg uh, till now has finished. I really hope uh, that uh, very soon a new bar will reopen. Uh, but uh, we have, other gay activities uh, which remain to restart, luckily. Uh, we have some gay parties. Uh, now in October is uh, a new gay party uh, event. Gay nightlife is possible. Even also gay bear life with the wolf parties. Yes. Tell me more about the wolf parties. The wolf parties are organized by, in fact, by the first Mr. Bear Luxembourg, Jose Sanchez, uh, who asked uh, uh, always uh, at go-go uh, dancers, bear uh, dancers to come, uh, especially come coming from Spain uh, to Luxembourg. And uh, so it's, uh, they, they are men only parties with uh, cool music. Uh, and there you really can see there is interest and people come. How do you want your community to remember you? For myself, it is important. Um, showing other people uh, that you can be yourself and it's that you should show it. You are as you are and it's good as you are. And uh, for me too, it was important bringing together 
uh, the Luxembourg bear scene and also fetish scene, which exists. Uh, in my imagination, I wanted uh, to lead the bear and fetish uh, community during the Pride Walk. This year for the Pride, there has no, uh, no walk again. There had been a uh, Pride show, which was really great, but there had been no walk. And uh, because of all those lockdowns uh, we had, um, this was really, really difficult. And I can say, well, okay, uh, this part of job I wanted to do, I didn't realize. And yeah, it hurts me a bit that uh, I... This uh, goal I wanted to do, uh, I, I didn't reach this goal. What advice do you have for future title holders? Be open-minded. Go to the people. Get in contact with them. Speak with them. Show them the way you live and uh, be honest with yourself and with all those to whom you, you are talking or to whom you are in contact. Very well, I would like to thank you very much for participating in the interview for Inside Another History of Fireside Chat. I hope I will meet you in Europe someday soon. <laughs>